We are here in the podcast studio at the International Institute for Nanotechnology at Northwestern University to bring you a preview of our very first season of the Nanoscape podcast. My name is Seth Zimmerman, Associate Director of Marketing and Communications here at the IAN, and I am joined by my co-host, science communicator and podcaster, Aaron Spain. Hi, Seth. It's great to be here, and I'm so excited to launch Nanoscape alongside you and the team at IIN. People may hear the word nano and think it sounds like something from science fiction, but nanotechnology is very much part of our everyday lives and is being used across industries from medicine to technology to even the arts. The nano landscape is vast, and there is so much to explore. Much of it is being done here at Northwestern University. This institute represents and unites more than $1.2 billion in nano research, educational programs, and supporting infrastructure. We created this podcast for smart, curious people who want to hear from the leaders in this field and better understand why this tiny science is being called the next industrial revolution. To give you a preview of season one of Nanoscape, we welcome Dr. Chad Merkin, director of the International Institute for Nanotechnology and George B. Rathman, professor of chemistry. Dr. Merkin is a chemist and a world-renowned nanoscience expert who's known for his discovery and development of spherical nucleic acids and many medical diagnostic, therapeutic, and materials applications that have derived from them. Welcome to the show. Great to be here. Chad, as Aaron mentioned, you are recognized as one of the pioneering leaders in this field and have been at the helm of the IAN since it was established in 2000. What about this field of study keeps you so passionate and engaged? I think it's one of the most exciting things to happen in science, certainly in my lifetime. It really is about redefining how we do science and engineering in almost everything that matters to us, anywhere in particular where materials are important. And the reason that is, is that uh, miniaturization of, of anything often leads to structures that have new properties, and those properties can be put to good work to develop technologies that can impact the world in significant ways. Give our listeners a sense of the current state of nanotechnology research at Northwestern University and where the field's going. Well, because of this idea that everything is new and miniaturized in nanoscience, we really have it broken down based upon uh, fields of technological impact. We have one group of people People that are focused on really studying the consequences of miniaturization. Why are things different? Why is it that when you shrink a piece of gold down to the nanoscale that it can be any color of the spectrum depending upon size and shape? Understanding that is an important part of defining the science of the future. Putting into good work, though, is about you know, developing technologies that can impact the world in significant ways. And so we have a lot of people on the engineering side and the medical side asking how do we take those miniaturized materials and turn them into technologies and products that can impact the masses in significant ways. And so if you look at how we're set up, I kind of think of the foundation being the science of nanoscience and nanotechnology. And we have groups of people from many different fields, it's highly interdisciplinary, coming together, bringing their talents to create a team that goes after advances in nanoscience that can impact medicine, impact the environment, that can impact energy generation, that can impact safety, food and water safety, for example, that can impact security. There will be many different technological drivers that will come and go in terms of interest areas, but nanoscience is here forever. And so being able to build this entity that can attract some of the best and brightest from around the world so that we can put together these teams when the opportunity exists to go after major societal problems and solve them is a big part of, of how we've structured the IIN. In this upcoming season, we'll be hosting in-depth interviews with some of the leaders in the field. Milan Merksic, Shana Kelly, Omar Farha, and Nathan Gineski. Chad, what can you tell us about these four and what can our listeners expect? Well, they're a prime example of the importance of the IAN to the entire research community, uh, but certainly the state of Illinois and, and Northwestern in particular. They all came from the outside. They were drawn to Northwestern because of the Institute, and they've brought their talents to begin to develop really important areas that are different, but highly complementary to one another in many cases. Milan Merksic came from the University of Chicago. Uh, he's invented uh, some of the most powerful high throughput drug screening tools that are out there. Really important in identifying new types of pharmaceuticals that will be medicines of tomorrow. He has a whole program based upon the concept of mega molecules, where he's learned how to put together these massive molecules which is kind of odd because you think of nanotechnology as small, but from a drug development stand <laughs> standpoint, nanotechnology is large. And he's figured out how to put together these large molecules in a way that, again, maximizes their potency and creates new shots on goal in terms of treating really debilitating diseases. 
Shana Kelly, she's our, our Canadian, along with her husband, Ted Sargent, who came with her, who's uh, running our clean energy effort at Northwestern, and also very important to the IN. Shana came and is focused on biomedical and engineering aspects of, of nanotechnology. She, of course, helped bring the Chan Zuckerberg Center here and runs that, mm -hmm. the Biohub. But her personal program focuses on a development of new types of technologies that allow you to sort and identify rare cells, circulating tumor cells, for example, and also to use that knowledge to create new shots on goal in terms of developing therapeutics, increase our understanding in particular of inflammation in diseases like cancer. Omar Farha, he's kind of our young uh, up-and-coming guy. He's built an incredible program focused on the development of what are called MOFs, metal organic frameworks. And these materials are really important in many areas. They have a nanoporosity that can be used to store different biomaterials, gas molecules, for example, if you're talking about CO2 sequestration, hydrogen transport, methane conversion as catalysts, for example, uh, and new types of materials that can be used for many purposes beyond, for example, creating new battery technology, new ways of harnessing solar energy, and many more. And then we have Nathan Janeski, who we brought from San Diego. And he similarly has some interest in the biomedical space. And he's developed a whole series of polymer peptide type constructs, nano constructs that look extremely promising in treating a variety of disease types. So that you're going to get a good understanding of the breadth of impact this field can have and the types of technologies that can be developed through the study of its science. All four of these people and many of the other folks that have been brought to the IIN in recent years, they came from other places and they chose Northwestern. They chose to come here to study and make this their academic home. Can you talk about this draw to Northwestern and how you've been able to bring all of these really prestigious folks in these different areas here? Well, you know, there's the old adage, you build it and they will come. Yeah. We certainly build it. We made a bet very early on in the game of the modern era of nanoscience that really paid off, and that was to build the Institute. And once we built this incredible infrastructure for doing this type of research, every talented uh, student that had an interest in this area was knocking on our door. A faculty uh, wanted to move here and team up with a lot of the faculty here because they could raise their games. Fraser Stoddard, a Nobel Prize winner who moved to Northwestern from UCLA, but originally from Scotland. He used to equate this place and, and make the comparison of France in the 1700s when every artist wanted to move there. His point was that everybody interested in nanotechnology in the modern era of nanoscience wants to move to Northwestern. I wanted to mention that you were recently awarded the 2024 Kavli Prize in Nanoscience by the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. You are the first Northwestern scientist to receive this prestigious award. Tell me about the significance of the award and why you said in some ways you were actually relieved to win it. Well, the Kavli Prize is a really important one, especially if you're in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology. It is, in many respects, uh, on par with the Nobel Prize. Many of the people that uh, have won it have gone on to win the Nobel Prize. And I think there will be many Nobel Prizes in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology because it is just so impactful. The Nobel really recognizes impact, and this is a field that generates impact over and over and over again because it's redefined uh, almost all aspects of science and engineering. Why I said I, I was relieved was we really take pride in viewing what we've built here as the best in the world. And if you believe that, if you drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak, it's nice to get validation once in a while that that is in fact the case. Many people here are in line to ultimately share similar glory in that regard. But I think the first example of this coming to our lab is nice validation of what we've been trying to build over the last couple of decades. The IIN Symposium is recognized throughout the scientific community as one of the premier events in nanotechnology. Tell me a little bit about this year's event, which will be held October 10th, and what can attendees expect? So look, anybody who comes to the, the uh, symposium is going to be treated to some of the best people in the world, uh, bringing, again, their talents to Evanston and, and telling us about uh, the most modern aspects of nanoscience and technology as they pertain to the development of medicines, the development of materials that can impact solar energy conversion, the development of devices and tools that allow us to understand human health in powerful new ways and the development of new types of, of structures that can impact things like battery technology and clean energy. One of my favorite parts, having gone to uh, two whole symposiums now, is that it's free. It's like a free symposium. That's always been something that really stood out to me. Is It's just such a great opportunity for people across the industry to just come to a great event, meet some colleagues, and learn about what's going on. So I really love that about the symposium. 
I'm glad you say that because uh, th- that was kind of our intent. We wanted to uh, have a give back to the community. We bring them every year some of the best people in the world. Very few people turn us down because it's an incredible honor. I think we've had 13 or 14 Nobel Prize winners speak at the symposium. It's probably the most important event, scientific event on, on campus, and it builds uh, an incredible support community. And, and many people have built lifelong relationships with us through this symposium. Rosemary Schnell, who the symposium is named after now, is a great example of that. She wanted to really make an impact and bequeath a good fraction of her estate when she passed away, which was an incredibly pleasant surprise to the IAN. Uh, and then now draws more students, more postdocs. And we've named the symposium after her because uh, she was such a great friend and has had such a big impact on what we're trying to do here. You've talked a lot about if you build it, they will come idea that Northwestern has become this place for really the who's who in nanoscience, whether they're coming here with their lab or they're coming here to speak at the symposium, they're coming to Northwestern. So with that in mind, any parting words that you would like to leave our listeners with today about nanoscience at Northwestern and why they might want to listen to this podcast? This is really a special field. This isn't a a niche type thing. It's something that's going to change the world in a profound way. Everybody will be impacted by nanoscience and nanotechnology in some form. Everybody's already been impacted. Uh, You look at the uh, COVID vaccines, those are are nice examples of really crude forms of nanotechnology, frankly. Being able to put together mRNA and tiny little particles that when injected into you stimulate your immune system to generate uh, an immunogenic response that protects you against COVID. There are going to be many other types of medicines that are much more sophisticated that are developed over the next few years. Uh, that I think are are, are going to have a profound impact on how we treat current disease and how we treat the undruggable right now, how we begin to create new types of medicines that allow us to treat some of the most horrific and debilitating diseases out there. So, you know, to me, that's exciting. That's what gets me to come to work every day. And I think people that come to the symposium often feel a similar level of thrill and, and excitement. And this year will be no exception. I strongly encourage people to listen to this podcast, understand what we're doing at Northwestern, but also come to the symposium and and see it for their own eyes. Well, that is a great way to wrap up this preview of our first season of the Nanoscape podcast. We are honored to have you on talking about the show with us. And we hope that our listeners will continue to show up for every episode and learn more about nanotechnology and the Nanoscape, not only at Northwestern, but around the world. Thank you so much, Chad. We can't wait to have you back on for season two. Thank you, guys. Make sure to follow us on Apple Podcasts and wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss an episode. Also, leave us a review and a rating. This podcast is brought to you by the International Institute for Nanotechnology at Northwestern University.